time you have a bullet mark, then you want to see whether or not you can determine the angle. You can also determine the angle that a bullet hits something. For example, somebody shoots into the wall or shoots into the side of a car, the bullet's going to have an elliptical path, much like a blood stain does. And so you can measure the length and width, you can you divide the width by the length, you take the arc sign, just like you did when you were doing blood stain analysis, and you'll calculate an angle, which is called the angle of incidence. In blood stain terminology, that would be called the impact angle. So, same angle, different terminology, depending upon who's doing the analysis. The way you can tell the difference between the, in, like, the bullet going in and coming out is the way the hole looks. So, if the bullet's going into something, generally it's going to be much smoother, much rounder, and it's going to be a nice clean cut. Whereas if it's coming out, you're going to have but you're going to have more of an irregular shape. It's generally going to be wider and you're going to have a lot of like cuts and jagged edges from it. When you're figuring out your azimuth angle, you want to take a protractor and line it up um, completely perpendicular to the hole, the entrance hole. Um, also what you want to use is your inclinometer to make sure the The protractor is completely horizontal. Um, if not, your azimuth is going to be off. And then what you'll use, you'll drop something called the plumb line, and you'll drop it to the left hole. If you guys can actually see, you can actually see that this bullet hole is actually going left to right. It's just the direction the bullet was moving. It's nothing more than that. Um, but when you describe your azimuth angle, you'll say left to right, and then based upon the difference in degrees, um, you guys will say it's left to right going at so you'll drop the plumb, plumb line right to the left of the end. And what, you'll get, what you guys actually want to do is you want to take a picture from uh, a top view to be able to say exactly what the degrees are. Like for example with this, it's four degrees left to right. Um, that's just giving you an orientation from if you're looking directly at the bolt, if you're looking directly at the surface, the bolt was moving from left to right at a four degree difference. And then um, another thing you'll want to talk about in your reports is whether your bolt's moving up or down. And with this, um, it's actually moving down, so it's going to be a negative value. It's going to be negative four degrees left to right. And if it's going up, it'll be a positive value. When I was talking about, um, you'll want to dictate whether the, the shot's going up or down. You'll also want to take a side shot, um, and this will help you with determining if it's going up or down. So we have a, what, negative four? Yeah, so it's going down, so that it would in fact be negative four degrees. So it's going negative four degrees down, and then four degrees left to right. But, and you'll, you do want pictures of both the azimuth and your vertical component. Be human error because if you're lining it up in the center, your center might not be the exact same as what I see a center as. Oh, wait, okay. And then you want it to be the reason why you want it on the left side is because it's going left to right. So if you have it on the right side, you're actually going on the wrong side of the path. So you have it on the right side. So. 3.5. <laughs> Four. I mean, some shots are going to be straight on, so you won't always have. So this is straight on. Yeah, just going up. So you have to figure out the vertical component. Okay. So we don't do, we don't use this. No, you can. I mean, you can still see. I mean, it could be really small. It could be like two degrees right to left. Like one to left. Just balance it on. I mean, you can hold it. Well, a couple of them have magnets, so they stick a little bit better. You just hold it, and then when it stops shaking, you read whatever degree it's at. And then if it's to the left, it's negative. it's negative. If it's to the right, it's positive. So if it was to the right, the thing would be going the other direction. It would be going up, not down. Right now, it's telling me that I'm reading 25th of a second at four and a half half stop. When I move it to the manual, it is telling me that I'm on bulk. So that's wrong. So you want to move it up to be at about 25th of a second. Now I bet you it takes the picture now. I don't know if it's going to be a good picture. 
when you when you move from aperture to manual check the the aperture values and the shutter speed and then readjust the shutter speed using when you get into the manual. Move it, move it closer to the to the top and now get your photo so that you're right at the same plane and as close to the wall as you can get. So you want the picture to be parallel to this or parallel to the I want it to be coming perfectly. You want you want to be able to see that this is an angle. Okay. Okay. So what you're going to do now, you're going to drop your plumb line down. Just touch the the uh, protractor and the, the rod at the same time. Now you now you take the photograph. Yeah, do I take it? You take it from either from above or underneath. Underneath might be easier because mm -hmm. you, if you go from above, you'll have your hand in the way. Okay. 